Hi everyone, my name is Laszlo Leber, welcome to my channel Coaching. Today we are going to create a multi-container application which will be running inside Docker containers. We will create both the development and the production version of our Docker files. Locally we will use Docker Compose file that will run the backend, the frontend, the Nginx and Postgres. And you will be able to start the whole construction with one command. For frontend, we are going to use React. For the backend, we are going to use Express Node.js server. And we are going to use Postgres to store the data in the database. We are going to use Nginx for two purposes, one for the routing and one to serve the builded frontend React code as an HTTP server. So if you haven't installed Docker desktop to your computer, please install it. But you can find an installation tutorial on my YouTube channel. If you search for how to dockerize a React application, you can find it on my channel. In the first part, we are going to create an application. But if you don't want to create the whole thing from scratch, you can download the whole thing. You can find my repository under, under my video. So let's get started. The architecture of the application we are going to build we are going to build both the development and production version of our application. We are going to use Nginx, Proxy, React Server, Express Node.js Server and Postgres for database. We will use Nginx for two purposes, one for the routing and one to serve the builded React files as an HTTP server. So based on the path, Nginx will decide that where to redirect our requests to the HTTP uh, server or the Node.js server. Please install uh, Docker Desktop because we are going to use it if you haven't installed it yet. And please uh, enable Kubernetes too because in the following video, my following tutorial, we will deploy our application in Kubernetes. Okay, the first thing is to run npx create react app client. This will create our client React application with name client. Okay, now create another folder in our main folder named server and run npm init command in this folder to create our basic backend application. Okay, so I enter to the server directory and run npm init command. Here I set some initial settings. You can skip these steps if uh, the given setting is appropriate for you. Okay, first we will create our backend application, our Node.js application basically. So open the package.json file in your server directory and uh, add some dependencies. We, we are going to add express. We are going to use pg, course, nodemon and body parser. And after that, please run npm install command to install these dependencies. Okay, our dependencies are installed. Now create a new file named keys.js. In this file, we will uh, declare the configuration of our Postgres. So here we set up our pg user, pg host, pg password and port. Okay, these settings will coming from the environment. We will pass these values from the Docker files and later on from the Kubernetes settings files. So here we use these environment variables to set our object and we will use this object to set up Postgres uh, in our main JavaScript file. So now create our main file index.js and here we we import our keys for Postgres and uh, 
now we set up uh, express so we require express here we require body parser for express and we will use course to ab able to use cross site scripting and uh, here we create our express application we set the course we set the body parser and uh, now we create our postgres client Here we use our settings, which we have already placed in the keys file. They are coming from the environment as environment variables. Now we will create an event on connect for Postgres and we will create a new table. If it's not already exist, the table's name will be uh, values and only one column will be in this table named number we will store numbers it will be a very simple uh, application because we will concentrate on docker and kubernetes in my next video now we are going to create some routes the slash path will return only hi and we are creating a new uh, api endpoints uh, values slash value slash uh, all it will return the values coming from the database so here we create a query select all values and return it in the response and we are going to create an other uh, API endpoint so we would like to store these values in the database table so create another endpoint slash values and uh, it will be a post request so we will get uh, the value uh, and insert it into the values table so here we define this uh, command and the value will coming from the request body value so if this request body value is exists then uh, we send the response after we insert it that okay uh, it's working otherwise we send back that working is false so not working the application will listen on port 5000 and that's all this is our little backend application and here uh, I just console log that something error on the, uh, during the connect and here uh, we should define some scripts the first is the development startup script which is only node mon and uh, for the production we define the node index.js now let's test our application npm run dev and you can see it's listening so everything is working as expected We can check it in the browser so if you uh, open a localhost uh, port 5000 you can see the high message here so everything is working as expected and we can check the value slash all uh, command but you can see it's expected that uh, postgres is is not available at the moment so okay uh, now stop this application and we will uh, write our client code Okay, first open package.json in your client folder and here we will uh, install some dependencies too. We will use Axios for the service calls and React Router DOM. We will define some test routing. So now call npm install in this folder too and install these dependencies. Okay, now we can test our application because it was created with mpx create react app tool. So everything is uh, working out of the box. You can check it on localhost 3000, but now create a new component, other page. We will create a test route for this other page component just to show that uh, routing is working. 
So create this component and put a link to go to home screen and a simple message here. Now delete everything in the app.js, so it is a, an empty component. We will define the router, so it's, it's uh, imported from the React router DOM. And uh, we will define the routes later on. Import other page. And uh, now uh, we will put a little header in this component. So put this message here that this is a multi-container application and two links. These links will always be shown because it's uh, it's in the header and here we define our routes. So the first route is the main path slash. It will redirect us to the main component and the other page route will redirect us to the other component. Now create our main component. This component will contains our business logic. So create main div and create a button here, get all number. This button will fetch the numbers from the backend. So create the action. It's uh, in a use callback hook. So import this use callback from the React package and uh, we can test our main component, so import it in the uh, app.js and wrap our content in a fragment, so only one child will be in the router component. Now you can see my header is working. We should define some CSS later on, but it's working now. Okay, now put some class names on the header and on our main diff later on, but uh, define our basic CSS. It's up to you that what type of styles you are going to using, but I put some margins and backgrounds to these elements now, just for testing purposes. So it shouldn't look nice, but it's more than enough now. Okay, it's more than enough for me. So now go back to the main component. Now we are going to write our get all numbers function. It will be an async function because axios.get returns a promise. We will fetch the data from the slash API slash value slash all endpoint. And we will store these values in the state. So we, we are going to use the use state hook. Now, uh, import the use state from the React package too. And we call set values values. Okay, now we will render these values. So in the return uh, section, we will map through these values and uh, return some elements in the DOM. That's it. And now we create our main components SCSS file. We give some class names to the elements and give a little style to these elements too. So again, this is a little test application, so this shouldn't look perfect. So I just give them some background and some margins and little border for the values. Of course, our endpoints are not online at the moment, so they are not working now, but we can see that the proper request call is created by Axios, so I think it's working. You can see that we call slash API slash values, but in our Node.js application, we only define slash values. Uh, this is because Nginx will redirect our slash API slash 
values slash all requests to slash values slash all requests into the Node.js application. So it will be handled by the Nginx proxy. So now create the same number function. It will be an async function too. We call event prevent default because it will be attached to the button in the form. And uh, we send our current value. So we define an other state value we, we, which will uh, store our value, which will be typed, which will be typed in the input field. So now create an input field and this input field will be use this value. And in the on change event, we call set value to set this value and uh, it will be refreshed in the state. And here we defined our submit button and uh, on the form define the on submit event. So the event handler will be our save number function. Now we call set value with empty string after we send the value to the backend and uh, get all the numbers again to show our brand new number in the list. Don't forget to add the peer dependencies to our hook. It depends on the value and the set function or sorry, the get function and add some new styles to the form. Okay, now check our form. Here you can see it's working, it sends the value, but our server is down, so it's not working yet. We would like to get all the numbers initially when the component is loaded, so use the use effect hook and uh, call the get all numbers inside it. Is the component in mount? And uh, please import the use effect hook uh, from the React package too. We should do a little refactor because the data is coming from the database, so we should get it from the data that data that rows, and from each row we need to get the number, so it will be a, an array of numbers. Okay, now our application is ready to dockerize, so create a new file, docker file that dev in your client folder. Okay, our image will be derived from the node version 14.14.0 alpha. Inside Docker, our work directory will be slash app. We copy the package.json from our root folder to the slash app folder in the Docker container and we call npm install. After that, we, we copy everything else from our root folder to the containers uh, working directory and call npm run start command. Okay, now we can test our Docker file, so call docker build dash f docker file dot dev dash t and I give a tag styler slash multi dash client to it. Okay, it's built, so now I can test it. I can run docker run dash it dash p. I, I will expose the inside port 3000 to outside 4002 and I use my tag to run my container. So here you can see my front-end application started and I can uh, open it in my browser on the port 4002. Okay, now we are going to create our server's development docker file. It's very similar to our client's development docker file, but we will call npm run dev here. And uh, because we will start it only with nodemon. And now, now you can build your server docker image too. My is styler hun slash multi-server. 
don't forget to add the point, the dot after your command and please use your own repository name, check it in your Docker Hub. Okay, it's working now, I can open my server so everything is working as expected. Okay, now we are going to create a Docker Compose file to be able to run our server and client and Nginx and everything together in our local development environment. So here we will use the Postgres image too. You can check it on Docker Hub. So here we define our Postgres service, the images Postgres we are using the latest tag here and we set up this environment variable postgres password postgres password and uh, the next service will be our server i call it api and we tell it that we are using our docker file from the server di directory we set up the volumes the first row we can tell that we don't want the app slash node modules to be the part of our volume and we would like to link the server directory in our main folder to the slash app folder inside docker. Here we will define our environment variables so the pg user, password, port and host so they will be passed to the object we defined in our keys.js file in the server directory. Now set up our client, okay, now define our client service, it's very similar to the server section. Now we are going to create some configurations for the Nginx, so create a new folder Nginx in your main directory and create a configuration file named default.conf file here. Here we define our client and ser server upstreams. An upstream module is used to define group of servers that can be referenced by the proxy pass. We will uh, use it later on. You know our client has port 3000 and our server has port 5000. Now create our main config this Nginx will listen on port 80. So for the slash location, it should redirect to our client server. So we use uh, proxy pass HTTP client. This client is the name of the service configured in our Docker Compose file for the client. To make the WebSockets uh, connection able to connect to the dev server, we should define the socjs slash node path here and in case of the slash api slash anything path we should redirect our requests to the node.js backend so we define this slash api location and write a little regexp to handle this situation this requests so in case of the slash api slash uh, anything we should redirect to the parameter one, which is the anything section of our regex, to the slash uh, dollar one, so the first parameter uh, path and break. We use proxy pass HTTP API because we we have given the name API for our server, for our Node.js server. So that's all. Oh, here, here is a little mistake. Here we should add a slash. Okay, now it's great. Okay, now create our Docker file that dev here in the nginx folder too. We are going to using the nginx image. So right from nginx. 
and uh, we will copy our default.conf file to the right directory where nginx uh, store it its uh, default.conf file you can check it in the page of nginx on the docker hub so here we can find nginx here and uh, you can find here the information that where nginx uh, stores its conf file, configuration file, so yes, our path is correct. Okay, now create our Nginx service in the Docker Compose file. It depends on the API and the client because it uses them, so it should restart always. It should use the Docker file from the Nginx folder and we should create port mapping. We will map the port from uh, inside 80 to the outside 3050. The restart policy is always because you know Nginx is the first thing which processes our requests and redirects to the right server, to the React server or the Node.js server. So if everything goes wrong, we should restart it immediately. Okay, now our Docker Compose file is ready to test, so we can call uh, in the main directory docker compose app double dash build command. Okay, for now it successfully started, and you can see here my application is working, it stores the numbers in the database, so I, if I refresh my, my numbers are here and uh, I can open it in localhost 3050. I can check the requests here, they are working. Okay, now we are going to create our production Docker file, so create a Docker file in your client directory. Here we will use the Nginx for one more purpose, to host our builded uh, React application, so in production you know we build our React application and we would like to host the application uh, with Nginx. So create a new default.conf file here. You can see the configuration about it here. So we listen on the port 3000 and here we set up our location slash. You know we would like to serve our index.html file which is created by the builder when we build React application. Okay, I copy everything from the development Docker file to the production Docker file, and and uh, now we are going to extend it from uh, with some with some uh, nginx configuration. So we are using from nginx. We expose the port three thousand and. Here we change the command to npm run build because after we install the dependencies we build the React project. We copy the nginx configuration file to the right place in the docker container, to the docker container. So here we set up it. So nginx will use our configuration and now we give a name for node uh, builder and from the builders slash app slash build folder we copy everything to the right place of nginx to be able to run our builded react code by nginx Okay, now we can test our docker file, so I call docker build and I use the same tag as before but I override my previous uh, docker image. I use the 3000 for port for the outside, you can see here my frontend application is running now, so it's working. 
basically now it's an important thing to push your builded image to the Docker Hub to be able to use in Kubernetes later in my next video. So call Docker push and uh, give your image name. And you can see here, I have successfully pushed my image to the Docker Hub. If I refresh the list here, I can find my multi-client now here. You can find here some information about it. You can check it here in the Docker Hub. Okay, now go to the server folder and uh, we are going to create our production version of our Docker file for the server. I just replace the command npm run dev to npm run start and I call docker build. I give it to the tag styler hun slash multi server as before. I overwrite it and I test it with docker run command. I expose the port to 4002. If I open the localhost 4002 in my browser, you can see it's working. So I push it to the Docker Hub. And uh, here you can see I push it to the Docker Hub. It's ready. So I, if I re refresh the list, you can find the multi server here with my client. Okay, that's all for now today. Our multi-container application is ready to use now. You can find the final source code under my video. In the next tutorial, we will deploy our solution on Kubernetes, so stay with me, it will be very exciting. We will use Ingress Nginx controller as a load balancer. Thank you very much again. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will find many interesting content on it in uh, the future as well. Have a nice day. Bye.